Forty years ago this fall, our founders came together to make sure that people in our part of North Carolina would never go hungry. Today, that commitment is stronger than ever. Our leaders, our staff, our volunteers, we share the same vision to help people when they need it and work to ensure that they don't. This is Path to Ending Hunger, the podcast for the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. Today, we'll look at how the friends of the Food Bank help us serve nearly 600,000 people in 34 counties. Hi everyone, I'm Tisha Powell and welcome to Path to Ending Hunger. I don't know how you feel about this, but every time I walk through a grocery store, I'll see a kiwi and wonder where it comes from, wherever kiwis come from, and it might be sitting next to some tangerines from Florida. A lot of work goes into bringing all that food together in one place, and the same goes for the food bank, except it takes a little extra layer of logistical magic to make the whole relationship come together to prepare a box of groceries for the next time that family walks in or knocks on the door. And to tell us how this happens is Carter Crane, the Director of Food Partnerships with the Food Bank. And we'll be also talking with Bill Herring from Herring Farms and Face on North Carolina. Bill grows soybeans, Uh, vegetables and melons, and some of what grows there ends up on the shelves here at the food bank. And Carter, how in the world do you pull all of this off? (laughs) Well, thankfully, we've got a big team. Uh, We've been, you know, we've been here for 40 years, uh, which definitely gets us cemented in the community. So we have a lot of great relationships with um, retailers, with farmers like Bill, with manufacturers, um, and we also have a huge team here. So we've got six warehouses in Central and Eastern North Carolina. We've got operations supervisors and truck drivers and warehouse operators to help make sure the food keeps coming in and going out um, to our agencies. We work with over 900 agencies that help us meet the need of you know 600,000-ish people that are in our community. Um, so it's a lot of moving parts to, to keep going. Uh, we're very fortunate. Again, we've had great support locally with companies like Food Lion, Walmart, jumping on board, really, really giving back, making sure food doesn't go to waste, it's not gonna get sold, getting that excess before it goes bad so that we can get it to people in need. Describe what would be a regular day for you here at the food bank. Oh gosh, uh, regular day. <laughs> That's funny to say regular day. In this I time know, that we're right? Dealing with right now. Well, none of us um, have had anything regular <laughs> recently. We, that's right. We have a lot of regular routes, so regular deliveries, um, regular stops where we're picking up food, uh, distribution centers. So uh, for me, a regular day is typically trucks are on the road before I am even in the office. Uh, when I get in the office, that's usually when something changes. Uh, a donor calls, a grower calls and say, hey, I've got some excess, You know, can we get it there? And so then we look at the, our truck routes and we see, is anybody close to that grower donor uh, that could pick it up today? Yes or no? If not, we say, can we pick it up tomorrow? Because we probably have somebody in the area tomorrow if we weren't there today. Um, and then it's it's reaching out to our, our partners and seeing what's growing, you know, depending on the season. You know, obviously right now we're currently taping this in in July, so it's really heavy into North Carolina's produce season, so a lot's happening. If you walked out in our warehouse now, you'd see just a huge variety of, of vegetables from potatoes to cabbage and cantaloupes and watermelons. I mean, it's, it feels great out there right now. Um, so just checking in with our growers and seeing if they've got excess and seeing where our trucks are, are coming by that can pick that excess up. And you've got some really precious cargo. I'm sure it's important to you to make sure that all of this stuff stays as fresh as possible and that nothing goes to waste. That's right. We really, you know, we feel like we're a a big part of the food system. Uh, We want to make sure we get that excess when it's good. We want to store it correctly. So we pick up in all of our trailers and our box trucks are all refrigerated so we can keep that temperature zone. Um, Because if you're holding potatoes at the right temperature, they'll last a long time. If you hold potatoes at the wrong temperature, especially this time of year, they can go bad pretty quickly. Um, So we want to make sure that we're being thoughtful around how we hold our, especially produce, because obviously uh, temperature sensitive product. And you're seeing a bigger need, a need like you've never seen before. Yeah, this has been a really, really crazy year. I mean, um, so far what we hear from our agencies, there's been a kind of an average of almost 40% increase in the people that they're seeing. Um, you know, we've been getting uh, support, which is great as well, so that we can help kind of meet that need. I feel like we're, we're always doing all we can with the resources that we have. And when there is increased need, again, we're thankful to live in a good community that helps us step it up even more. And are you surprised by the uh, 
by people's thoughts of what you're getting from the food bank. I think a lot of people don't really think that you're going to be able to get fresh fruits and vegetables and things like that. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've made a really big switch to that. I started in this role about 10 years ago, and we were doing about 15% fresh produce. Um, we're up to about 38 to 40% now, so we feel really good about that. I don't know. Uh, my diet is certainly not 40% fruits and vegetables. I think the, I think what we all want to be is probably that 50% mark where we're eating that. And so, you know, uh, but we feel like we're doing a really good job getting to that 40% mark and, and helping people eat healthy. You know, just because you're having going through a rough spot in your life um, doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and what are people saying? the ones that you are able to, to come into contact with about what you're providing? Uh, people are just really thankful for fresh produce. Um, I think that, you know, it, it can be more expensive at the grocery store. It's obviously easier to get a, a can of beans, uh, which sits on the, you know, can sit on the shelf for a while and, and provide that kind of stability in your pantry, which is also important. But uh, that fresh produce just feels so good. And, and um, you know, we get a ton of support locally from North Carolina farmers, and people love to support their local farmers as well. And the farm Farmers love to make sure their food isn't getting wasted. So it's a it's a win 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 all the way around. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Carter Crane, Director of Food Partnerships here at the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. And when we come back, we'll talk about relationships and the Food Bank's relationship with farmers like Bill. <music> hey there, this is Vivian Howard from the PBS show A Chef's Life and Somewhere South. Growing up in Deep Run, North Carolina gave me an appreciation for local agriculture and traditional Southern food. But when I returned to Kinston to open a restaurant, it was clear to me many were struggling to find enough to eat on a regular basis, which is why I support the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. They're working every day to nourish people and build solutions to end hunger. And they place a priority on distributing healthy and fresh food, including produce from right here in Eastern North Carolina. To find out how you can help, please visit our website, foodbankcenc.org. Hi everyone, I'm Tisha Powell. Welcome back to Path to Ending Hunger. We are here in the teaching kitchen in a working warehouse at the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. Thank you for joining us again. We have Carter Crane and Bill Herring as our guests today. And Carter is one of the people who makes sure that the food is on the shelves. And tell me more about the Food Bank's retail donation program. Yeah, that's a, that's a great program. You know, we are fortunate again to be in an area and cover about a third of the state of North Carolina. So there's 500 plus grocery stores you know, in all these counties that we that we support, and our trucks just can't get to all of them. So we, you know, we train our agencies, our partner agencies, so soup kitchens, food pantries, to pick up on our behalf. The food's going to go right there anyway. Uh, it stays local for the grocery stores, so they appreciate kind of the the localness of their donation even even more sometimes, especially in the rural community. And you know, that's a big part of our program. They, you know, our agencies pick up about 18 to 20 million pounds a year. The last last few years uh, and those again stay directly in those counties where those those grocery stores are so it works out really good so bill tell us how do you get the food from your farm to people's tables everything is harvested and put out our loading facility and the food bank has their own trucks and logistics to, as well as the packing supplies the pallets the bins the everything to pick it up. Uh, we make a phone call, try to let them know in advance what we have, and uh, they we kind of line it up from there on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you grow? We grow watermelons, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, a few spaghetti, and some cabbage. Uh, as far as the stuff we deal with the food bank with. And how long have you been partnering with them? Probably, I'm gonna say close to eight years somewhere in that neighborhood. Have you been a farmer all your life? Pretty much, yes ma'am. Uh, I have uh, farmed uh, pretty much most of my life and uh, have always uh, specialized in vegetables for the better part of it, so. So when did you decide, or even better, why did you decide to start donating your food? There's a lot of uh, produce or vegetables that has got blemishes that does not meet the standards to go into your food chain as far as your grocery stores or what have you. There's nothing wrong with it. It just is, uh, for lack of a better word, ugly sometimes. That uh, is 
as far as the quality is no issue that's being wasted. It's been destroyed in the field or not harvested at all and left there to rot. Uh, and there's a lot that can be used for people that's in need. And that's one reason I looked, reached out to Carter to see if we could help there. And if Do you think people have this idea that the food that they eat doesn't grow right here at home? But you know that it does. Yes, I think that is the content, you know, the contention a lot of time is that it's coming from out of state. Uh, I know a lot of in season stuff here is uh, coming from North Carolina. Most of the time this, grow, this time of the year is coming from North Carolina. Uh, usually we start harvesting sometime the end of April and it usually lasts uh, on spring crops until like the 1st of July and then you got your potato crops, sweet potatoes that'll start in October and it usually lasts until December. So it's a uh, bigger winter than people realize. Now most of the sweet potatoes that people get come from right here. Aren't we one of the leading sweet potato growers in the country? Yes, we are. It's, uh, I'd say if we're not number one, we're two if, at the best though. Uh, but yeah, most of your potatoes will come, sweet potatoes will come from North Carolina. And why is that? Is it just the conditions? Uh, land type, soil and growing conditions, yes. And next time we'll look at the Food Bank's Farm to Table program. You're listening to Path to Ending Hunger. The Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina has provided food for our friends and neighbors facing hunger in 34 counties for 40 years. Simply put, the Food Bank works every day to provide food to people in need while building solutions to end hunger in our communities. Through a network of more than 900 partner agencies such as soup kitchens, food pantries, and shelters, they nourish families, children, and seniors living with food insecurity. Through education and programs, the Food Bank empowers communities to overcome hunger, creating an environment where all North Carolinians thrive. Find out how you can help by visiting foodbankcenc.org. That's foodbankcenc.org. We're back with Carter Crane and Bill Herring. Some people probably have this inaccurate notion that um, when you come to the food bank, it's gonna be all boxes and canned food, when in fact, last year, you distributed almost 35 million pounds of fresh produce. That's yeah, a lot of food. That's a lot of food, it's a lot of fresh food. Um, it's a lot of food that has an end to its shelf life. Uh, so we have to move very quickly uh, a lot of times. We're we've very proud of that number. I mean, when I started here 10 years ago, we were probably doing 15% produce, which at the time was probably six or seven million pounds of food. And, and so now to see it grow to 35 million pounds of food and almost 38% of what we're distributing, that makes me feel like we're giving people healthy options no matter what they're going through in their life. That's um, something to really be proud of here at the food bank to actually collaborate collaborate with local people, specifically farmers like Bill, and you are helping to make sure that he has that fresh produce. Yes, we grow uh, watermelons, uh, hard squash, and uh, sweet potatoes. And uh, we try to give him an idea of what we'll have each year and uh, devote about 50% of our production to that. And uh, so we, we do have some kind of game plan up front and try to do our part anyway. And how has the, the year been going so far? Uh, it's been a, it's fair at best. I mean, it's been a wet spring. Uh, we've lost some crops uh, due to excessive rains and what have you. But I think at the tail end of the, the season, I think we're going to pull out and be okay. It's, uh, it's not going to be the, as what we were anticipating, but it's not going to be a total loss neither. So, What are you seeing more of this year? What do you think will be the good crop? Uh, in our area, I think it looks to be sweet potatoes this year. It looks like it's going to be a big crop. The rains have come in time. It's running just a little later than normal, but the rains have come in time and uh, it's backed off. It's not been as wet, and the crop looks really good at this time. It looks like a bumper crop at this moment, which it's not made yet, but it's getting close. So. Those must be two good words that you like to hear, bumper crop. <laughs> we always like to hear that. We always like to hear that. We do try to, you know, we live in the, in the world of excess a lot. And so we're kind of listening to, you know, our experts and our partners that tell us kind of what's coming and what's growing really well. You know, and Bill's really helped us be more thoughtful in our planning ahead. We, we can be very reactive because we want to be where the excess is and, and make sure we're finding home for where the, the extra produce is grown. But Bill's helped us keep consistency and growers like Bill have helped us, you know, plant ahead and be thoughtful around, you know, 
know, wins that's coming up and so we can have a better kind of game plan and a little more consistency for our agencies. And, and speaking of our agencies, you know, they've had to make big changes too. Um, uh, it's not just our new building that has great refrigeration space. You know, our agencies have had to, had to build their capacity to hold fresh produce as well. Mm -hmm. And Bill, you've been spreading the word about the ability to donate to the food bank when you have those extra crops. Yes, I do a little bit of crop adjusting work on the, uh, during the season and uh, deal with the right many producers that have a lot of vegetables. Uh, most of the time it is, uh, might be blemished or some problems with it just on account of the weather or what have you. And it's got a short, that's got some life left to it. And uh, so we, I do put the word out and give Carter's name and the food bank uh, information out to them to see if there's a possibility they can work with them. Have they been receptive to it? Is we've had some success. We have. Uh, there's been several that we've been able to, over the last two year, in particular, that has uh, made contact and they were able to uh, get in, you know, get stuff to Carter up here at the food bank. So, and it must be just a good feeling for you to know that when your food comes here. It's going right to families. It's going to those people's plates who need it most. Yes, it is. There's a, I, th I feel like there's a big need out there and I feel like there's a lot of product out there that can be used to fill this need that's being uh, destroyed or wasted or what might be the case. So tell us about, you know, the, the people that you work with every day and how everyone has to collaborate to get this just right. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of moving parts for sure. You know, one thing we haven't even talked about yet is our volunteer force. You know, we get a lot of bulk produce in. If you walk in our cooler now, you'll see 2,000 pound bags of white potatoes and 800 pound bins of, of uh, white potatoes and sweet potatoes. And, you know, a lot of it needs to be sorted. Uh, the, the farmer maybe didn't or the grower maybe didn't have uh, the labor to sort through it to get it to the different channels that he's working with to try to sell it. So he just donates it in bulk, which is great for us because we've got wonderful volunteers that understand the importance of fresh produce and getting that to people. So they'll sort it. Uh, we're actually composting what, what is bad and, and making nice family bags with what is good. So it is really a um, full service here at the food bank. We, you know, we can take that bulk in from the from these growers. But yeah, it's it's growers, it's truck drivers, it's volunteers, it's staff, it, it, it's our partner agencies, it's the volunteers of the partner agencies. I mean, it takes a, a lot of moving parts to, to rescue food or to get food that's excess and get it to people that need it. Rescue food, that's a great <laughs> term. Feels like it sometimes, for sure. You know, because yeah. you're rescuing, rescuing food and, and literally rescuing families at the same time. So, and, and that's something that the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina has been doing now for 40 years. And you're part of that history, the both of you are. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's a good to be able to come to work and know that you're helping out, um, not only families in need, but also, you know, we don't need food in the landfills either. We, you know, we overproduce because we, you know, we need to, to make sure we're meeting our, our marks in this country. But if, if there is excess food, we wanna make sure it gets to people in need and not just, not just thrown away. So we know we, it, and it takes a lot of work to, to make that happen. Well, Carter Crane and Bill Herring, thank you for your time and for your perspective, but mostly thank you for what you do every day for so many families here in North Carolina. And thank you for listening. And next time we will talk about how the food bank partner agencies play a role. And this has been Path to Ending Hunger brought to you by the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. I'm T. Chappelle, until next time. This has been Path to Ending Hunger, the podcast for the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina. Thank you for listening and for caring. At the Food Bank, our doors are always open. Perhaps one day they won't have to be. Until next time. To find out how you can help, please visit our website, foodbankcenc.org.